If you were ever to find yourself in the middle of an active shooter event, Imagine dropping your ballot off and a gunman walks in and opens fire. It is an uncomfortable scenario, but one Denver election workers are preparing for. Local election workers are taking a bold and unusual step now to prepare for the elections. Poll workers are getting active shooter training in case things turn violent. It is an extreme precaution, but officials say it makes good sense. Denver 7's Mark Stewart shows us. For the first time ever, Denver's 350 election judges will have to complete training to teach them how to respond to an active shooter. It happens to coincide with one of the most contentious campaign seasons. Try to secure your hiding place the best you can. Run, hide, and if you have to, fight the message in this training video. Turn out lights, and if possible, Remember to lock doors. The course is now a requirement for all of Denver's election judges, the part time workers on the front lines at voting centers. Have you received any specific threats or reason to believe there would be violence on Election Day in Denver County? At this point, no. Um, in previous elections, we have responded to threats that have come in and dealt with those in an appropriate manner. Denver's director of election says the decision to provide active shooter training was made about a year and a half ago, long before Donald Trump's debunked claims about a rigged election. Is active shooter training really necessary? Any sort of emergency situation is a key component to our preparation for the election. The training is online as a last resort. It teaches people to use improvised weapons, things like scissors, a stapler, even hot coffee. It made me nervous. Carrie Weinberger Morneau recently went through the training. You need to have a plan in any emergency situation. Officials tell us they are planning for a smooth election. They note election judges are not allowed to carry weapons, but Denver police will provide protection at the city's 26 voting centers. In Denver, Mark Stewart, Denver And new details tonight, really, that are just sickening. A babysitter arrested for attempted murder allegedly threw the infant he was watching because the baby crawled near a PlayStation console and pulled a cord. This is according to the arrest affidavit released today out of Fort Collins. 24 year old Caleb Collins was arrested on suspicion of attempted murder back in July. Police say the injuries the baby received are so severe the baby will likely never. See, hear, or have purposeful. And new tonight, reaction from the husband of the legacy bus driver killed in a crash at DIA. He's seen the new surveillance video and looked at the final report about what happened. Denver 7's Jennifer Kowaleski joins us now live. Jen? And the big question why did this happen? DPD says they found no definitive cause, but some closure for the Chopper family. It's very hard watching that video. In less than four seconds, Carrie Chopper lost her life. Three legacy coaches were critically injured, and an entire community was left in shock. Seeing that she went around the corner and then went to the pillar is, it was horrible for me to see. I, I, I wish I didn't see it. Chopper's husband told us by phone he wished he didn't have that memory of his wife. I wish I knew an answer on why she wrecked. More than a month later, Denver police say their investigation has found no definitive cause. We simply are going to have to call this one a mystery. But witness statements from the final report detail more about what happened. I almost got run off the road by this bus. Uber driver George Skinner says he saw the bus weaving over two or three lanes prior to impact. That's his pickup in front of the bus. Horrific scene. Kids were kicking the windows out trying to get out. Um, you could see that there was damaged faces and and people screaming. Police say they found no drugs or alcohol in her system, no medical issues, and nothing wrong with the bus. My wife just she had an accident. Me and my kids want to be able to move forward and live our lives. Now, here's something else interesting that we learned today. The bus was headed towards the East Terminal Arrival Garage when this crash happened. Well, it turns out that area has a 9 feet 6 inches clearance. And police told us that the bus today was just, that the bus was about 10 or 11 feet high, so it wouldn't have fit. But it's not clear what role that played in the crash. I'm Jennifer Kovaleski for Denver Sun. Well, the drive to push Daesh out of Iraq is also gaining force. U.S.-backed soldiers have begun shelling Daesh positions on the outskirts of Mosul. Thousands of troops are massing outside the city in preparation for a battle that could spell the end of the terror group in Iraq. Daesh members have been burning tires and oil to block the view of planes. Mosul has been under Daesh control since 2014. 
Let's take a closer look at the military offensive. Around 60,000 Iraqi government troops and U.S.-backed militias are said to be taking part. Iraqi army soldiers and Shia militias will lead the attack from positions near the town of Koyara, which lies some 50 kilometers south of Mosul. Kurdish Peshmerga forces will block Daesh terrorists from using escape routes and scan people fleeing the city. Turkish trained fighters based at the Bashika camp will also be taking part. Despite objections from the Iraqi government, Turkey has been training fighters from Mosul and Kurdish Peshmerga units at Bashika in northern Iraq. Adding to these soldiers are U.S., French and British special forces who will play advisory roles and coordinate coalition airstrikes against Daesh targets. Let's speak to the journalist Campbell McDiarmid, who is on his way to Erbil, I believe, uh, on the way to that front line of that war. He joins us now on the phone. Campbell, good to speak to you. Uh, I believe you are on your way to Mosul. What are you hearing in terms of what is going on in the front line and these reports that Daesh has begun uh, burning oil? Yes, good morning. Uh, that's right. I'm uh, heading from Erbil now to the Gaza front line, which is not far from uh, Bashika, which you mentioned in your report. Um, what we're seeing at the moment is a, a very large buildup of troops, um, Iraqi security forces and Peshmerga heading to the um, to the Hazard front line, um, which is leading people to think that probably the operation is going to start, if not today, then the next couple of days. And as you mentioned, ISIS is... is um, deploying one of their tactics, which they use to try and thwart uh, coalition airstrikes, which is to set oil wells on fire. Uh, that's something they did uh, a few months ago when Gaia was taken, and those oil wells are still burning. Uh, whether or not it's very effective against the uh, the coalition jets is hard to say, but it may be more of a sign of uh, their, their sort of desperation and preparation for this coming battle. Um, I listed some of the different players involved. They seem to be quite a lot of them. I mean, how are they all working together uh, on this fight for Mosul? I would say that uh, a lot of the players you mentioned are uneasy allies at best. Um, the coordination that I've seen has not been particularly close at times. Um, the Peshmerga and the Iraqi security forces have uh, somewhat of an uneasy relationship. Uh, but then when it comes to the uh, Peshmerga and the Shia uh, militias, that's, that's even less coordination, I would say. And you mentioned as well that um, Baghdad is not happy about the presence of uh, Turkish troops mm. around uh, Bashika. Okay, Campbell, good to speak to you. Campbell McDermott, a journalist, uh, heading to that front line there on the phone. Good morning. Shots fired at a Shawnee quick trip overnight. This happened near 75th and Schweitzer. As 41 Action News reporter Sarah Plake found out, this all started when the officers tried to arrest a man on a felony warrant. So, Sarah, is he in custody right now? No, police were not able to arrest him. The uh, suspect is still out there. Police are working to find him right now. They're using quick trip surveillance, and this all happened here behind me, where police still have that area taped off. The Shawnee police officer was following a car and ran the plates, finding out the owner has a felony warrant out. He pulled the car over right here in Quick Trip parking lot and saw that, that a Lenexa officer was pulling in to go inside as well, and that's when things escalated. The Shawnee officer flagged the Lenexa officer over, said, hey, can you help me contact this guy uh, involving the warrant? They go up to contact this guy. A struggle ensues. Um, the Lenexa officer falls down as the person who had the warrant was starting to back the vehicle up. The Lenexa officer falls down and discharges his firearm. Right, so we're learning that the officer did mean to shoot. We don't know if the suspect is hit or not. The suspect is in a blue car, and we're hearing that he was last seen getting on I-35 North. The Lenexa officer who shot his gun is now on paid administrative leave. That's just normal protocol. And now Johnson County investigators are stepping in to finish that investigation, like I said, taking pictures, looking at surveillance to see if we can track this guy down. In Shawnee, I'm Sarah Plake, 41 Action News.